Every month, we ask our readers to tell us what they do and how they use the automation systems they live with and trust. Hi, I'm Walt Boys, editor of Control and ControlGlobal.com with another market intelligence report from the Process Automation Media Network. This month, we're asking about process control software. We got a wide spectrum of demographics in response to our survey. 37% of respondents came from continuous process plants, while 21% came from plants with both continuous and batch processes, the so-called hybrid plants. 8% came from discrete manufacturing, while 15% identified themselves as working in batch plants. Interestingly, 19% said they had some of each of these in their plants. We asked them what types of process control software they had in their plants, and 88% said they had basic PLC software and hardware, 73% said they also had DCS systems, 57% said they had field controllers, PACs, with HMI software and historians, and 39% identified their systems as having SCADA software and hardware. So, how ubiquitous is Windows? As we prepare to migrate from Windows 2000, Windows XP, and Windows Vista to the new Windows 7, we asked how many of our readers use Windows-based process control software. The answer was overwhelmingly yes. 75% said yes, while only 25% indicated that they didn't use Windows for process control software. So how do our readers handle the required software updates? 64% do a manual update for each machine after testing the update for compatibility. 15% buy a service from their control system vendor, while 10% update operating systems automatically and another 10% of readers do it never. 2% indicated that they buy an updating service from a third party. Windows software and programs running on Windows need updates. There's Patch Tuesday with Windows Update, and control system vendors have their own patch schedules. So we asked our readers how they handle process control software updates. Not very surprisingly, 62% said that they only update at major revisions, while 19% bluntly said they only update when the vendor ceases supporting the revision they're using. 14% said they update only as part of plant upgrades, and 6% say they never update their process control software once it's installed. We wanted to know what our readers think distinguishes good process control software from bad, so we asked them. Their responses cluttered around four main issues. Over 80% asked for good, easy to understand and use HMIs. 71% said that it was good customer service that made process control software good. 63% said it was easy to use, easy to learn to use engineering tools, and 45% said it was tight integration between the modules. So how is process control software purchased? We asked who our readers buy their process control software from, and the answer was clearly that most buy from the control system vendor. 73%. Interestingly, 25% said they bought the software themselves and hired an integrator to engineer the project and install the software. 10% said they let the integrator or MAC who specified and builds the system do the software selection and procurement. And there were even a few, less than 2%, who design, install, and engineer their own software. Now that, of course, led to asking if they'd standardized on a single process control software platform. 48% said yes, 27% said no, and 25% said they had so many different hardware platforms they feel they can't standardize on a single software platform at all. Yet several vendors are pushing a single control platform for the entire plant. And so we asked if our readers thought it was possible or practical to really do that. We were interested to learn that over 65% of respondents said yes, 
that it was practical and possible to have a single control platform plant-wide, while only 35% said they didn't think so. So, some interesting intelligence from our readership on process control software. This has been a market intelligence report from the Process Automation Media Network. I'm Walt Boys. Thanks for watching.